before that, I need a thumbs up from you guys if you can hear. There's no echo in the voice, and if I am clearly uh, visible to you all, a thumbs up if all of it is fine. Welcome to Chai Time Quarantine. First of all, I'm good, Sunny Jaiswal. Thank you, guys. Please thumbs up if I can go ahead, or just send me a wave, something. Okay, so let me start by introducing myself. Please give me a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly and see me clearly, so that I can go ahead and start my bhushan. Okay, all right. So hi, my name is Elisha Mir. I am an actor and a dancer. And today, I in chai time in quarantine, I am going to be interviewing uh, one of my recent favorite filmmakers. Her name is Megha Ramaswamy, and she is the director of. Which is trending on Netflix now, which is called What Are the Odds. So I'm just waiting for her to come live so that I can join her and uh, we can start talking. Thank you, Sunny. He just said I'm looking gorgeous. Thanks. Okay. Hi. With us, so let me just start off. Hi. So beautiful you are, my my. Thank you. So, uh, first before starting, let me give me my grand introduction. But even more so, look here, man. So, okay, going for it now. Who would have thought a global pandemic would hit us in this year? Who would have thought a situation requiring everybody to stay in quarantine, lockdown in their houses would arise? And while we had it, who would have thought we would stumble upon a very interesting film on Netflix while we are looking for something? Interesting to watch while we are getting bored at home. A film that is so atrangi and vichitra, so much so that if I talk about the great film, this one doesn't take all the boxes, but it really invents them. So, the person to be blamed for gifting us this beautiful film is the mother of the odd squad. His name is Megha Ramaswamy, who is the directress and the writer of this film. Welcome, ma'am. I think congratulations are in order. Thank uh, you. Is, you don't uh, have to call me, ma'am. On Netflix now, and uh, it's an amazing, amazing film. So congratulations. What is the vibe like? Are we are at your house. The vibe uh, at my house. At your house and within the team. I'm sure everybody. Oh, the team is ecstatic. I mean. Uh, you know we started off as a very uh, small independent film and for us to get the kind of release and the kind of uh, attention that we that we did was uh, was beyond our expectations and uh, you know i mean I, i'm i'm very surprised that we like kind of thought it would be a small film because it really blew up and in, for, for some time i was like a little possessive about the kids especially about yashasmini and karandeep like why are people writing articles about you is this something we signed oh, no. for and they're like listen no just don't be like aunty like let people write about us it's all so yeah no, but i get what you're saying especially yashasmini and what she's done with her character my god she's so adorable Yes, you have to meet person. Achu and Vivek are uh, are the kindest. You know, more than anything else, uh, I think the most amazing quality about them is that they're such kind, humane, and intensely affectionate people, which is so, which is something I never get to see around young people. I always see them as smart and quippy and like hyper intelligent and all that. But these are basic qualities about you, human beings that you know we underestimate. In a way, so it was very nice to see two young people who weren't affected and who were so kind, and I think that just translated into the characters that they, uh, uh, you know, played as well. Absolutely, Can see all of them now. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to ask you the cliche question, but as a twist, I'll give you a little clue. So instead of asking how is your the lockdown treating you, I will say where are you in lockdown? Who are your quarantine partners? And uh, how is your case going? So. Very. Oh. Is it your dog? Is it your dog? Mama. I've seen him, but please tell me more. So uh, she. Uh, What's his name? Her name is Mama, and uh, I heard her, her uh, some time ago from uh, an NGO called the Modern Mugli in New Delhi. And then Mama happened to star, and she's in the opening sequence of the odds. Uh, she debuted with Abhay in uh, his arms. Which is uh, more than any you know, uh, debut that any young woman would ask for. So we're very happy. 
So she's my quarantine. Oh, cute. And, uh, you know, the quarantine, some days are good. Some days are absolutely, you know, we're wondering, like, what's going on. But it's always an important time in the history of the world to take a step back and to, um, you know, that's that's where we are with the quarantine. I mean, it's 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 a it's a very uh, tight time in the universe. You know, when you look at what's happening all over the world. There's a pandemic. There's a racial pandemic. And what's most important is that people are reacting. People are writing about it. So so. The world is dealing with it in its own uh, uh, special ways, and I think if it's motivating us towards being uh, more empowered and more uh, affectionate humanity towards each other, uh, then I think if it's a pandemic that takes that time for us to reflect, then so be it. Okay, so um, starting with the questions, as a writer, storyteller. Uh, have you been recently feeling creative or are you really, you know, uh, taking it one day at a time? So, in that sense, how's it going? Like, are you feeling really creative? Have you been writing a lot? Well, like, not even a little bit. The only thing that keeps me going is the fan art that keeps coming in, is uh, the, the the feedback from our wonderful art squad world over. When they draw things, when they make music, when they send in their poetry, then, then, then I'm like, okay, there is. There is hope, but no. And it's impossible. You know, there's so much of pressure to be creative. Everyone like three days have to create karo. I say nahi hota hai. You know, we, we can't I can't even make a sandwich right now because that's how disinterested I feel in general. And I think it's a very important uh, moment of time in life again to kind of pay attention to our mental health and take that pause. We don't have to come out geniuses and students of the year at the end of it. It's good enough if they are human beings who are just about making it one day at a time. So no, to answer your question, I'm not feeling the least creative or motivated to do anything for that matter. And I think, yeah, I, I, I'm in awe of people. And it's a very intimidating time as well because people are making films, people are making amazing videos. And I'm like, here I am, I'm not even able to make a sandwich properly without, uh, you know, a, a concept. Like, I'm not able to, like, do an Instagram post without wasting 45 minutes in how it's done. And I'm like, how is the universe cracking it? So I feel like clumsy and uh, worried, but I think it's an important time to address it as well. And to all the young people, actually, it feels it's fine. You all have to be geniuses. So take your time. Okay, so talking about your journey as a filmmaker, you are a pass out from FTI. You've been a screenwriter, director, and producer, and you've delivered award-winning films like Newborns and Bunny and uh, The Last Music Storm. You've made documentaries. So when did you, as a kid or maybe in your college, decide that you want to be a filmmaker? Why did you want to tell stories? And what are the kind of stories that you wanted to tell when you first started up? Wow. Kitna question poochliya tumne ek So, uh... Stop John. See, Deepika is here, and I, uh, I, I want to tell her. She took care of me when my hand was broken. And hi, Deepika, I see you just uh, sent me a message, and I always think of you, and I love you very much. I just want to tell her. She just met. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, not all my films have won awards. Uh, Bunny didn't win anything. It was too uh, esoteric for people to. But uh, yes, Newborns won. Uh, uh, the last music store one, and uh, uh, yeah, when I started off, I didn't even know, you know, as a young person, uh, films weren't something uh, that were accessible to us, it was another thing that I'm from Pune, and the Film Institute happens to be there, and uh, more than being a filmmaker, I actually wanted to be a novelist or a poet, you know, and uh, when I was growing up in Pune around that point of time, uh, uh, they introduced the screenwriting course in FTII. And uh, and th that's when I was like, this means I can do e everything combined into one, which is my love for visuals, my love for writing. And uh, if you're, you know, and in a way, I will be a poet and a novelist if I, if I make films. So that was what struck me. But honestly, it took me uh, uh, some time to get a hang of that as well. Uh, one of the first films I wrote was Shaitan. It was again about young people in a way, and uh, and at that point of time, I was like, 
how you know the, the this is and when you're young you want to be uh, you want to explore the reckless uh, and then you're older you're like nah violence doesn't excite me anymore so i think uh, it, it just it, it's everything changes with time and as long as you allow yourself to change is and and you know i think that as filmmakers uh, i'm someone who believes that there's no need to have one particular style you can adapt and and uh, Uh, just be fluid with all kinds of filmmaking and try everything. You know, if you can, there's room for um, everything you're becoming. There's room for you to become uh, an art house filmmaker or very commercial filmmaker. Like you don't have to define yourself. I mean, is that to filmmaker? But but no, you know, it, it it doesn't make sense. The world is too hard with these definitions, so it's better to just step away. So next question is not in the script, but uh, I want to ask you. Talking about screenwriting, uh, you've been a screenwriter. You've wrote for a couple of projects. So, has there been any incident coming where where you must have written a particular scene in a particular way, and the director or the actors must have interpreted it in a completely different way? And uh, a either you were very disgusted by it, or b you were really surprised that wow, yeah, has been interpreted this way. Has there been any? ऐसा हमेशा हुआ है एंड आई वो दिस इज वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू वॉक टू नो इज ऐसे ही होना चाहिए वॉट यू हैव इन माइंड वॉट यूर एक्टर्स एंड वॉट यूर परफॉर्मर्स विल ब्रिंग इन टू इट विल ऑलवेज बी समथिंग मोर मोर देन वॉट यू हैव इन 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 माइंड एंड इट्स ऑलवेज गुड टू बी यू नो दैट फ्लूड इन अ वे एंड मेक रूम्स एंड एडजस्टमेंट्स वेर इट वर्क Sometimes you write scenes that are not comfortable for everyone, and then you work around them. And I think that's the that's the democracy of film in a way that you should uh, kind of have that free space to collaborate, to create, um, and to to have fun with the medium more than anything else. No matter what your it's a very collaborative, creative uh, space, and in that it becomes sacred, you know, because you're listening to each other, you're hearing each other out. You and actors are so precious in a way. You just have to. Uh, Oh, I I feel you. You you have to work around them, you know. Um, and I have. Uh, and I usually don't work with uh, uh, professional actors as much as I work with non-actors. Uh, so for me, my training ground has been working with non-actors who've always interpreted uh, uh, scripts not in any kind of acting, like not in you know keeping mind or an acting discipline as such. So it's always been very instinctive. And uh, which is why it's always a collaborative process for me, and it's never a, a, a matter of discussion. I don't think it arrives at all. Like it doesn't. No, I also think you're very as a creator. I think you're very generous, and you must fully be a team player in order to be selfless enough to be okay with it and to keep the uh, the story uh, as a priority. Also, I know you're really inspired by children, and you work with children for Bunny. So and for what are the odds also a little like teenagers now? But uh, what is it like working with children? I know you love children and you call yourselves yeah. an older child. But yes, I am absolutely. Uh, I I don't see my I I think for the next ten years I only see myself working with kids. Oh, uh, so and I have you know even with newborns. Uh, when I work with Lakshmi and when I work with the. Uh, uh, This my work. They for for me they were kids. I mean they were very young, which is the tragedy of it that uh, you know acid violence doesn't spare any man in a way, and which is why the the film is called Newborns because a part of their childhood was completely erased. So it was a dedication to their childhood in a way by calling it Newborns. And yes, children will always be fascinating for me because I think uh, uh, I think I love that part of my uh, growing up a lot, and I hold on to it very dearly. And I think the the adults I meet are so jaded, and they so uh, they they don't excite me as much as uh, you know the instinctiveness and this, the 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 affections of younger people do. I I feel that a certain cynicism comes along with being old, and I have been you know uh, contributing to that cynicism in a way. It's just that when I make films about younger people, um, I feel that I can truly make a difference in addressing that cynicism and kind of stepping away from it. So yeah, but I mean, there's great stuff happening. Like uh, a lot of writers are able to get that uh, 
that lightness out of uh, adults as well. I mean, I, I, I can't wait to watch uh, Sujit Thakkar's uh, latest film, which is that. So I, I, I'm waiting to watch the trailer. It's so fascinating. So, but with, for me, I will always hold children very dearly. Yeah. Because they bring out the best in me more than anything else. And I think that's what's most important for me. Yeah. So, um, also, uh, now, what are the odds of your first feature film? Of course, you've done a lot of work, a lot of projects before this, award winning films, documentaries, and all of that. But experience wise, how was your experience of shooting a feature film where you have different collaborators with you, working with Abhay, uh, an ensemble cast? that experience different from anything that you may have done before because I think the projects that you did before were completely your babies and completely like you were controlling everything all the strings must have been in your hands but here, but here you may have had to like be more collaborative and all of that so how is the experience different in both? See as far as collaboration goes uh, I think it's important to treat all projects as as everyone's children you know because nobody is going to be like Hamid especially if it comes to me nobody is going to come with my project saying ki, because everyone knows the way I work. It's, it's, it's a very uh, collaborative, slightly scattered, slightly eccentric process. But it, 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 it has its own perverseness and fun to it. And uh, uh, with the odds, you know, I'm uh, first of all, I'm film caravan of producers, and they never really feel any the fact that this is my baby. So they were very respectful of that, and you know I'm very spoiled as a uh, as a history in a way is is very uh, is very particular and also peculiar because nobody does that you know uh, because I have dealt with uh, several other projects post yours and I'm like ha oh, but I mean what are the odd me there's always this are you sure so yeah I'm spoiled when it comes to producers. And um, okay, this one is my favorite question. So one thing that really intrigued me about you when I was studying you is that on one hand you're associated with something like cause effect that works on uh, creating cause related content. Of course, you've done newborns, you've done really nice documentaries. And uh, now on the other hand, you've given us something like a bunny or a what are the odds, which is completely whimsical and outlandish, and it's like fairy tale land, and it's like one thing that's so close to reality, it's a documentary of acid attack survivors. And the, on the other hand, you're giving us something that's completely different. So how come both these things, both these completely polar opposite genres are coming from one source? How is that? How does all of that fit into that one talented thing? You know, that's because I never put any rules. Or, uh, I'm telling you as a kid, I want to do everything. And I admired the works of so many people. And I'm like, yeah, does it mean film directing means you only have to be one kind of director? And I and I hated the fact that I only make one kind of thing. I wanted to I I just I just believe that there are different styles in me that I haven't explored yet. I want to make oh I I want to do everything. I want to make sci-fi, I want to you know, and I just don't want people to tell me you're only this much. And first of all, you know, if you're a little it's so important to be women and kind of uh, explore things with a feminine angle in a way. And the fact that I've been able to do that, you know, be it uh, with documentaries, be it with my fiction work, fiction work. And the fact that I will, con that's the only thing that uh, I will probably be confident about, about the work I do. But I want to surprise myself all the time. Like I want to do mysteries and, uh, and thrillers and uh, all kinds of films, you know. So... Uh, I don't think I want to define and limit myself as Are ye whimsical film banati, are ye serious film banati, wo zamana hai gaya. Just, you know, films are democratic. Make what you want to make. And people, you every kind of film will have its audience. So you should never be scared. You know, don't be scared of critics, don't be scared of re reviews, don't be scared of, 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 of what people tell you, don't be scared of presenting anything because I think that's what bogs us down. That the world is harsh on us and we are too affected by the world to, you know, we become crowd pleasers at the end of the day. Saying, Achha, to a fanboy situation, we break to break it. We have to be our own fans in a way, you know, and that's how it changes. I, I, and I think people are changing the game now and uh, 
that's what I'm super excited about. People like you, good for us. <laughs> we are getting to see amazing films and amazing content. Women in film today are changing the game, and I can, I can give that to you in writing, and that's something I'm super proud of. There's not one male filmmaker. who has crossed limit the way women are and i can say that very confidently about 2020 <laughs> so yeah. yeah so take you know yeah it is the year it's a great year in terms of it's been a couple of great years in terms of films world over and what women are creating so also my next question um i think you've told us that you are very instinctive and you let your gut guide you but uh, when you thought of becoming a storyteller of this speaker so as a child aapke man mein kabhi aisa tha ki okay there is this one kuch bhi karu life i want to do all kinds of cinema all kinds of movies i want to make but there is this one aim i want to have an ultimate aim or maybe a legacy as megha ramaswami through your films that you want to leave behind or do you just want to be a free spirited explorer throughout your life i just want to be an explorer <laughs> like i i can't you know we uh, we take ourselves too seriously and it's okay to take yourself seriously and everyone takes themselves responsibly if you if you're making uh, films especially in 2020 but at the end of the day there is you know all this crap like legacy and blah 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 it's okay yaar kuch nahi hota legacy ho jayega ho ja ho no i think what's important is that you know, we all just inspire each other to be decent human beings stop you know stop kind of clawing at each other right more uh, fantastic women characters kind of always uh, be answers to what you have found irritating with uh, a culture you know whether it's been like a certain kind of oppression that you have uh, experienced uh, you know through your own life or through the lives of others i mean anything it doesn't necessarily always have to be politics or you know, it can be something as simple as a character like vivek like, i mean when i was growing up i never found fun characters as kids and i'm like acha to you know this is a good way to kind of uh, uh, deal with that but i was growing up i never found complicated uh, storylines everything was just so spoon fed ki acha this is a children's film acha this is that acha so there was never so i was like let's address all that right now and uh, i pt so i think that's what uh, i wanted to do and not to make such a big deal out of everything so film bana rahe ho kuch eventful nahi kar rahe ho it's as amazing as somebody working you know calls everyone this is work at the end of the day you know and there's a certain uh, romanticism that comes to films ki are film bana rahe hai bahut lonely hai suffer kar rahe hai chhod ho ye ki kal ki baatein ho gayi hai i mean tum kaam kar rahe ho at the end of the day and you know you are you're working responsibly you're putting a set together and and just provide just just don't be toxic in in a culture that's known to be toxic you know and films as an industry have been toxic for a very long time and finally they're breaking out of that toxic culture and and making life you know um and making use of our platforms and i think i i want to continue with that like instead of thinking ahead like we both like legacy i just want to You know, like there's a very sweet thing that Vivek says in the film where she says, "I just want to be independent, pay my bills, so I just want to be independent in 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 what I'm doing." You know. So, who are your, some of your favorite filmmakers or actors? I know you've acted in one film. Do you have any plans of going back to it sometime? And uh, who are your favorite actors and filmmakers? Abhay Deol is my favorite actor, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I really love Abhay uh, a lot, and I think I I love uh, Irfan. And uh, when I love the camaraderie you guys share, I've seen a lot of interviews uh, of you guys. You are constantly pulling each other's leg, always just being so fun together. I wish I could do this interview with all three of you. Oh, oh four wait. of you, Mr. Pip. Hey, you're hey, Irfan. Interviews <laughs> get tired of us. They're like, "Hey, look, what are you doing?" And you know, just nice to it. And it's nice to it. Patal Lok and Yuvraj have released at the same time. So, and our interviews kind of happen you know, parallelly. I mean, the Patal Lok Zoom team comes in. They're all very well mannered, and they, they, you know, they're very like mm-hmm. in tune with what's going on. And then they're like, "Hey, your hair is very nice. Hey, you know, so it." it Okay, so I'm like, guys, just behave, just behave, please. Don't embarrass mother like that. So, uh, oh. yeah. 
Harsh is there. Harsh, your favorite person in the industry in general. Harsh Gordon Kapoor is here, and he's. Hi, Harsh. Please ask you something. Who's your second favorite maker? Harsh is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I genuinely, I think Harsh is such a cool guy. I've known him for such a long time, and he's he's one of the only actors who kind of really gets it. So yeah, I, I I'm very fond of him. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, coming on to the most fun part of the interview, this is called the odd segment, <laughs> where I'm going to be asking you very odd questions. Just ke jawab, you can go to the wildest parts of your imagination and give. Anything, give me any answer. So we spontaneously, I will try and make this. Uh, uh, this I call this a wannabe rapid fire session. So it's kind of like that. Okay. Question number one. Define odd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Next question. If I look at you and yawn, what would you do? I will yawn back. Thanks. I love that moment in the film when Mr. Gopal and uh, Vivek are looking at each other, and then Mr. Gopal yawns, and then Vivek yawns. I was rolling on the floor laughing. It was such a nice, amusing moment. And all of us uh, on set yawned along with Yash because a, a yawn is the most infectious thing on earth. So we're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, your favorite childhood memory? Um. I have so many, I think, uh, but just hanging out with my grandparents is my favorite childhood memory. Oh. And eating my... I, mean, I, I fortunately had all kinds of grandparents. So that hanging out with a generation of older people and uh, having them tell me stories has been the most fascinating part of my childhood. Yeah. So, suppose if right now you're sitting under a tree somewhere in, say, Nainital and you're watching the sunset, what would you be thinking about right now? I, it's, it's kids are watching this. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. But I mean, come on, use your so, sunset hair, Nainital hair. What is missing? Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what is your pet peeve? Do you have any pet peeve? I do. Actually, I have so many. It's not even for, like I can't uh, like there are too many, man. They're, like if, if you've, you've put me in such a spot right now, but um, ironing elastic really like when I watch people iron clothes with elastic. And I know too many of my friends do that, and and I, I have fights with them about it. So that really upsets me. It's it's my okay. yeah. Okay, what according to you is the deadliest sin? Like in a good way or in a bad way? Like in, in any way. way. <laughs> you can make it fun, you can make it serious, whatever. Give me any answer. Sin. I don't know, man. Uh, deadliest sin. I don't. I, I just get like such. Oh, I, I I don't. It's too adult for me to say. So I'm I'm not gonna. Okay. You know, I'm gonna keep the keep in fact that ours is a PG thirteen film, and I'm gonna stick to that. And I think the deadliest sin is trying to kiss a forty year old when you're uh, fifteen. It's very bad. <laughs> I'm gonna stick to the theme of the film. And what is the greatest virtue? Greatest virtue is kindness, yeah. I mean, affection, kindness, being good to animals, enough. Yes, really important. Okay, what do you think happens when we die? Fun answer. Um, we uh, get reunited with everyone uh, who's died before us, who we miss very dearly. So, like, you know, our. Maybe it becomes sad. We won't know who becomes sad. It's, it's who we leave behind who will become sad. But if most of people we love are in heaven already, <laughs> it's fine. So, but but that's what happens when we die. We we are reunited with people we've missed too long. And gosh, there's a list. So yeah. Okay. So as an audience, what is the kind of content that you like to consume, and uh, which one is your favorite film of all time? As an audience, as a lay. Uh, 
Jo Jita V Sikandar is one of my favorite films. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's one of my favorite, favorite films. Andaz Apna Apna is one of my favorite films. Yeah. Also, Tridev is one of my favorite films. And Chameli <laughs> Ki uh, Shadi is one of my favorite films. Actually, Chameli is one of my, Chameli Ki Shadi is one of my most favorite. Anil Kapoor in that film, An- Anil Kapoor and Amrita Singh in that film. They blew my mind, man. What a cute film. Like, I can watch that film. I was not born that time. Yeah, please watch it. It's such watch a lovely, lovely it. film. So, yeah. So that's okay. Uh, films, very interesting. I, films that are absolutely serious and don't take themselves so seriously. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you have to say the first word that comes to your mind whenever I say the following. Hmm. Whatever I say, just say the first word. Okay. This one we'll do as rapid as possible. F T I I. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hmm. Okay, I have to say one word, right? Poha. Okay. Childhood. Fun. Stories. Me. Friends. Me. I'm my bestest friend. <laughs> Got it. Okay, the odd bull. Precious. Love. Everywhere. Misfit. Yashaswini, me, Shreya, and uh, a whole bunch of powerful women. There's room for us. Fun. I mean, I hate to sound like a megalomaniac, but I think I'm the funnest person I know. Me. <laughs> okay. Abhidhyot. Fun. Okay. Um, Yashaswini. Karanveer. Achoo. <laughs> okay. Music. What are the odds? The soundtrack. Magic. Uh, Yashaswini. Life. Better and better. None. Now, next is this or that. And very stupid questions I've put in the thoda. thoda. Uh, as for my current scenario that that's going on in the house <laughs> don't judge but rats or lizards oh uh, no no what are you going to with you one. okay there is a rat in front of you and a lizard in front of you which one would you rather bear I'll get out of the house and I'll um, I I will step out no in the sense I'm genuinely scared of both they are I'm not going to pick rats who am I let them all live in okay. and just not come home. Okay. Diarrhea or constipation, what would you rather have? Diarrhea. Okay. So at least get rid of the top. Yeah, get it. I can't, I can't, I'll, I'll struggle if I can't poop for a long time. I, this is such a fun interview. We're talking about poop. I love talking about farting and pooping. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Okay. Coffee or chai? Um, coffee. Huh? Priyanka, rats. How do you like your rats? Rats. I have to say rats for Priyanka because our, our Miss Bo is here as well. So rats. I actually agree on that. I had to get pest control done yesterday because I was seeing lizards in my house and I can't take it. I was crying while talking to my friends that there is a lizard in the house. Okay. Short films or feature films? Both. Choose one. Short Please, films. If you can. Short films. Okay. Vivek or Ashwin? I know you've never given an answer. If it, it, just because you've never given an answer between these two. No. No. Can't decide. Me. Me. I pick me. I am the best. Compared to Vivek okay. and Ashwin. Both the characters have come from you, so you can. Childhood or teenage? Teenage. Okay. 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 Writing. Ah. Reality or fantasy world? Fantasy. Okay. I know the answer. Yeah, I knew. I knew it. <laughs> okay. Audience or critiques? Both are equally important. Audience. I mean, obviously, audience. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so uh, last question of the segment. What is the oddest thing that you may have done recently? Like for example, today when I was having uh, my chai, chai patti khatam ho gayi, so I mixed some coffee in the chai mein and it was delicious. Yeah, we call it... So that is the oddest thing I did. What's the oddest thing I've done? I have d- discovered a great snack, okay? Which is basically... Okay, uh, it's, it's very... It's strange, but it's actually dipping biscuits in water. And I'm loving... I'm loving... water biscuits i know right i want to try it. please try it if you like parleyji biscuits you should dip them in water it's perfect man very nice <laughs> yeah. okay okay to wrap the interview up now um given the current situation what's your wish okay. pass wish want you to take it wish okay all right hello <laughs> okay Where, what is your headspace like now going forward? Have you kind of made peace with the uncertainty or uh, does it still make you very anxious? Like what, what happens when you think of the future now? Or the uh, you know, I've been where I've stopped thinking of the future because it, it just makes me anxious and uh, it is an anxious time. I mean, more than anything else, where have we headed as, as uh, a collective, you know? So I think it's, it's the right time to kind of ask questions that we haven't asked ourselves introspect part with what we can when it comes to uh, movements world over uh, especially that address casteism racism and providing for uh, uh, you know a, a section of society that uh, have always been ignored because of uh, you know the fact that we have made use of our privileges uh, without keeping them in mind so right now is the time to kind of level all that and be respectful human beings or you know so yeah, yeah. Okay. last question now um so as the mother of the odd squad it sounds so cool i want to be a part of it <laughs> but as the mother of the odd squad uh what is the one message that you would like to now give out to all children teenagers and young adults to be okay with their peculiarities eccentricities and the oddness don't let the world get to you the world is a cruel pr- place uh, uh sometimes and it's a blessing sometimes and count your blessings uh and always question if you're being bullied say you know and just 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 know that the fact that a person ha- has made you feel a certain way is not your problem it's their problem and don't let anybody get any better of you and and that's it just be 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 weird be calm it's fine